Hello aspirants, this is me Yasmin Gill and in today's video we'll be covering the PIB highlights of 25th of March. So do follow all these highlights on this particular link and as soon as you view this video, let me know of your feedback. Also, if you want any changes, you can put that in the comment section and do rate and review the videos. So let's begin. Today we'll be covering many articles from Indian Express since it's a weekend. So under society related issues, we have Down syndrome. So this was this word uh, Down syndrome day that was being celebrated. So it is a chromosomal condition. It's a genetic condition that is associated with not just intellectual disability, but with physical disability as well. So what the what does the patient suffers from? He suffers from a problem whereby he has 40 so 47 chromosomes instead of 46 which are present in majority of the people. So where is the problem? It is the it is in the chromosome number 21 of which we have one extra. So this is about down syndrome. Then we have about anti-discrimination and equality bill 2016. So this bill was moved by MP Shashi Tharoor. So it, it being a private member bill if the government pushes through it, then it would be a very good idea. So it needs the support of government. So in that context, what are the benefits of such a bill coming up? Firstly, it will be doing four of its key features which make this bill relevant. So first feature is it recognizes the universality of discrimination. By universality, we mean that it is not necessary that a particular section of society is always vulnerable to di discrimination. For example, it is not always that minority have to be the victim of discrimination. Anybody can be a perpetrator and anybody can be a victim of discrimination. So therefore, what it does is it, 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 it recognizes the universality of discrimination. For example, if you th uh, think of a phenomena, social phenomena, social evil known as patriarchy. So if you look at patriarchy, we might think that it's only women that suffer from patriarchy. But it is not just women that suffer from patriarchy, even men suffer from patriarchy. How so? Because the patriarchy, what it believes in? It believes in segregated gender rules, whereby we have certain emotions attached to women, certain emotions attached to men. So men supposedly are, are not supposed to show a weak uh, willpower or they must not cry. Similarly, they have this professional segregation as well. So cooking is thought to be a woman's uh, profession and so on. And while if in case a man wants to cook or join as a chef and all, so that is generally not considered at par. So it is patriarchy is not just, uh, the victim is not just women, but the victim is equally men. Therefore, it recognizes this key feature of discrimination. Second feature of the bill is, it understands discrimination by the eyes of victim and does not merely go on the perpetrator's intention. For example, for any uh, say selection to a particular exam, there might be this discrimination by the perpetrator whereby a minimum height is minimum height criteria is kept for something where height is not necessary. So this might exclude women because women in general tend to be shorter than men. So therefore such issues whereby discrimination should be taken from the eyes of victim and not from the perpetrator's intention that has to be taken care of. So it understands the evolving nature of discrimination whereby it takes care of evolving nature of discrimination such as boycott. Boycott is also a form of discrimination, harassment and so on. Third key feature is it focuses on not just public but also private. It recognizes that with the help of government whereby we went for affirmative action Affirmative action is not sufficient to tackle discrimination. Therefore, private collaboration is also needed. Fourth key feature, it creates a civil liability and not a criminal liability. So major focus would be to pay the compensation and protection to victim rather than punishing the discriminator. How is this helpful? Because see, in case the offense is criminal offense, what happens is it, it, re it requires a high burden of proof. This will take delay and therefore this, this leads to under enforcement of laws. So why not go for a civil liability? Finally, it recognizes in an overall manner Dr. B. R. Ambedkar's approach whereby an imperfect solution which is accepted by majority or many of the people, it is preferable to a perfect one that is championed by few. So this is about this particular bill. Moving on, we have the issue of moral policing and the anti-Romeo squads. So a lot of news and you have to th think about the ethical angle of moral policing. So uh, this can be, this come, can come up in the ethics question, ethics part of your paper. So firstly, this was this promise by BJP. It was an election campaign whereby such thing would be brought up to provide women security. So the intention of the government was to provide women security. But issue is that while such procedures or such institutions such as anti-Romeo squads, while they are in operation, it is very difficult to draw the line between molester 
and genuine amicable couples so this might result into these squads ushering into extortion violence humiliation and so on coaching centers malls etc might become targets and if you look at the current social dynamics the current social dynamics is such that the walls between genders they are breaking so plus there is another factor that women are uh, women are more and more getting educated so they are coming up into urban areas and colleges and so on so thereby it's very common to find men in, uh, the girl and boy together say in mall or watching movie and so on but anti romeo squads might go at times against them seeing from a current incident in up as well so this might create what shakespeare said in romeo and juliet a fool's paradise whereby young people would have to pay the price of peace then we have due to to practice tolerance so all these articles are are from indian express so this talks about in, including a fundamental duty to practice tolerance in our constitution this was written by soli saurabh ji so firstly it talks of the core relation between rights and duties the prime example of this is gandhi ji's statement whereby gandhi ji said that i learned from my illiterate but wise mother that all rights to be deserved and preserved come from duty well done This is not just limited to Gandhi ji even Walter Lippmann even the universal declaration of human rights all talk of the uh, dual nature of rights and duties where one cannot be enjoyed without the other without the performance of the other so currently how are we not being tolerant you can cite a number of examples theek hai so one of them is the padmavati issue whereby screening was not allowed making of the movie was not allowed so that is how we are turning intolerant and this is a this is a big big challenge to our democracy because democracy must encourage heterodox opinions different opinions not just those opinions which are relevant to your thinking moving on the issue right now is that okay if tolerance is to be incul- inculcated why not include tolerance as a law but problem is that being tolerant cannot be legislated why so because the very idea of tolerance and the things to which you are tolerant it's a very dynamic concept for example if you imagine going away uh, year going years back maybe issue of transgenders coming up with the transgender bill might not be uh, proper then but today we have moved towards that as well so tolerance is a very dynamic concept it cannot be legislated that okay you must be tolerant to this this and this so there has to be in general a culture of tolerance whereby we must not hold prejudices so what is required for it roles of various stakeholders role of press role of education and most importantly role of judiciary for example judiciary in one of its famous cases s rangarajan versus p uh, jagjeevan ram it said that freedom of expression cannot be held to ransom by an intolerant group of people so finally we must include it as a duty and this is very important to protect the pluralist nature of indian democracy under polity we have indian democracy this is basically the continuing fight between executive and judiciary so this is related to that Indian democracy is based on the concept of checks and balances which is important so that one power cannot get uh, one one institution cannot get overriding powers this is specifically important whereby we are seeing governments that have overwhelming majorities not just at the center but also the same political party might be present in a critical number of states as well so in such a scenario supreme court has stood has stood the ground as an independent institution whereby it has uh, stood against two features of memorandum of procedure related to appointment of judges one uh, for one uh, particular point for which it has stood against it has stood against the government of india's proposal to reject candidates on the basis of national security all the five judges of collegium they unanimously dismissed it plus what they say is that government could come up with material in support of the security concerns but if the collegium is not convinced the name must be immediately sent to president second proposal which it rejected in the memorandum of procedure was it rejected the proposal to set up a permanent secretariat to collect the list of candidates why because it said that such a secretariat should not function with the law ministry rather it should function with the judiciary so these are the two issues whereby it stood against you may choose to differ and have your own opinions on that but overall one thing is certain that judicial oversight is a very key requirement in democratic system under economics we have central board of excise and customs will soon be renamed as central board of indirect taxes and customs this is in a uh, context of the gst legislation coming up then we have east coast economic corridor see we are trying to use economic corridors the concept of economic corridor development in order to promote india's growth story 
So in the context of economic corridor development, we are seeing a huge collaboration from Asian Development Bank. So East East Coast uh, Economic Corridor will be India's first coastal corridor. It will run from Kolkata to Kanyakumari. It's a multi-modal corridor, and also its phase one is to begin from Vishakhapatnam to Chennai, whereby it will be covering Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. Also, Asian Development Board is helping. Asian Development Bank is simultaneously helping helping us in SASEC operational plan. Now, I leave one thing to you. Do tell in the comment section. SASEC countries are made up of which all countries? So, SASEC operational plan is trying to do away with the uh, barriers related to transport, trade, etc. So, this is all about the concept of economic corridor development. In science and tech, we have technology as a boon or bane. So, two classic examples which you are seeing right now in current affairs. So, one is technology acted as a good thing, whereby it helped in the immediate reporting of incidents. For example, the action of Shiv Sena MP Ravindra Gayakwad, who assaulted Air India personnel. So, maybe that complaint could not have come into picture had someone not filmed it. Secondly. We, uh, technology is also bad. How is it bad? Because recently we saw in Chicago live streaming of sexual assault using Facebook Live. So other than that, even ISIS used it for propaganda recruitment. It was also used in fanning of violence during Muzaffar uh, Muzaffar Nagar riots. So it's both bad as well as good. And therefore, at current context, what is needed? Most importantly, with respect to social media, the technology companies should come up with greater filters, and they should act immediately in cases of complaints. Also, people must come forward and complain. For example, in the Chicago issue, there were forty people who saw the video, but none of them complained to police. So this is all about technology. You could use such examples in your essays and all. In environment, we have World Conference on Environment conducted in New Delhi by NGT, and you could use this quote as well on environment. Then we have Ganga, a living persona. So Uttarakhand High Court recently gave this verdict whereby it said that Ganga and Yamuna are persons and they have equivalent right to a human being. While Uttarakhand's High Court, Uttarakhand High Court's intention was merely to protect rivers from pollution, but see, you could uh, have two lines of thought here. One is that okay, fine enough, Ganga is a personality. It has been glorified well enough in poetry, films, etc. It has its own course and so on. But the issue is deeper, and what is this deeper issue? While using Ganga or thinking of Ganga as a metaphor or as a person, it excites people. It encourages us to protect the rivers. But why don't we think it as an ecological entity? Shouldn't we protect Ganga because it is an ecological entity and not merely because our religious feelings are attached to it? This is important, particularly because not every river has a religious feeling attached to it. Similarly, we must take care of other rivers also, thinking that they are ecological entities and not just because they are religiously important to us. Then we have these MCQs from today's session. One is related to grand challenges in India. Then about insider trading, very important issue. Then about hemo hemochromatosis and find it. Okay, this is the last MCQ. Do check out its answers in the MCQ course, and you can rate and review the same. Also, any sort of feedback more than welcome. Plus, do recommend these videos to your friends as well. Thank you so much.